Hello, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at this language, which is the language L, of all strings of the form 0, 1 star, such that every two ones in W are separated by at least the log of the length of the string number of zeros. So in other words, that every pair of consecutive ones is separated by a lot of zeros compared to the length. We can't have two ones that are really close to each other in some sense. Another term for this is called sparse. So the string w here is a sparse string in that the ones that are right next, uh, that are consecutive are far apart from each other. And what we want to show is that l is not regular. So this is actually a little bit of a challenging problem because what we would want to do is we want to get a string that is in the language and long enough. So we're going to proceed by a proof similar to every other pumping lemma proof is to assume that L is regular. And of course, when we assume L is regular, there exists a pumping constant. And I'm going to call it L for now for L. And as long as we pick a string of length at least L and also in the language capital L, then what we would try to pump it and try to get out of the language like usual. But what I'm going to do here and what may seem a little weird is I'm going to pick um, any number P such that it is at least L plus 4. And I'll explain what the plus 4 actually comes in. It's to avoid a uh, degenerate case for which the string doesn't even exist. And we can do this because as long as we pick a string of length at least p and in the language, well, p is bigger than l, so therefore it has length at least l, which is the pumping constant itself. So as long as we pick a string of length at least p and in the language, we are all good. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to choose the string, and it may seem a little weird, which is 1, 0, with a lot of zeros right here, 2 to the p, minus p, minus 3, and I'll explain where that comes in, 1, 0 to the p, 1. Well, let's see, what is the length of the string? Well, the length of the string w is 1 for the single character 1, then 2 to the p minus p minus 3 for the this run of zeros, another one, p more, and then this one. Well, the three ones here are canceling out with the minus 3 here, and this p is canceling out this minus p. So the length of the string w is 2 to the p, and so the log base 2 of the length of the string is equal to p, because it's just solving this equation for p. Well, then this pair of consec uh, consecutive ones is separated by at least the log of the length of the string number of zeros. Well, what about this one? Well, it seems like it's a lot more, but if we pick p to be relatively small, then this might be way too short while this one's okay. Well, this one is okay is because of this plus 4. So as long as I pick a plus 4 here, this allows us to have um, a length that is long enough so that this really is at least the log of the length of the string. So, therefore, this string is in the language because this one is definitely at least the log of the string length, and this one is because of this plus 4 here. And I'll invite you to figure out why, uh, exactly why this plus 4 actually works. Let me turn off notifications. Okay. So what we need to do now is we need to look at all decompositions of the string. So look at all decompositions of w. And what do these uh, comp decompositions look like? Well, they have to be where the length of y is at least 1, and the length of x, y is at most p. So remember w here is going to be x, y, z. We're going to split it up into three parts, such that the middle part has length at least one, and the two first ones have length at most p, where p is this the number that we have right here. Well, let's see. Well, 
the first P characters are not all the same here. And that, that may be a problem, but what we're going to do is we're going to have it break down into two possible cases. Well, one case could be where the Y part is, um, includes the starting one right here, and the other case is where Y doesn't include that starting one. And this plus four actually comes from the fact that I'm going to have this part right here be strictly larger than, or at least as large as P. So this length right here is of length at least P. So this run of zeros right here is of length at least p. So let's write that down. So we have that um, this run is of length at least p. So then that means that the y part according to this must be either including this one or just in this zeros. But it can't hit this second one right here because this run is of length at least p plus one. Um, and so therefore, it can only be in the one, with the one right here or the zeros. So what are the possible cases? Well, if the y includes the one right here, that means that x is the empty string. So case one right here, where x is the empty string, y is, includes the one, but some number of zeros, I don't know how many. So it may be no occurrences of zero or m maybe more, we don't know for sure because we're looking at all decompositions. And then z is the rest, which is zero to the two to the p minus p minus three minus alpha, where alpha comes from the number of zeros that y took and the rest of the string over here. So what are we gonna do here? Well, we have to choose an i such that repeating the y part um, that many times, i times, results in a string not in the language. That'll get us the contradiction we want. So in this case, we're going to pick i to be equal to 2. So x, y squared z squared just means that two occurrences of y. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, that, well, x, there's n nothing in it. Two occurrences of y, that gives us one zero to the alpha, then the other occurrence of it. And then, well, this run of zeros is going to cancel the minus alpha with the alpha here. So we're going to be left with the same number of zeros that we had to start with, in that run at least, and then 1, 0 to the p1. Well, the thing is, let's see. We know that the length of the string before was 2 to the p. So this implies that x, y squared z's length is at least 2 to the p plus 1, no matter what happens. Because we're always inserting one character, at least, from this another occurrence of y. So that also implies that the log base 2 of that length must be strictly greater than p, because right here, if we added one more onto the length of w, then it would be more than p. And since the length of the number of zeros has to be an integer, then therefore the, the number of zeros that are needed between consecutive ones must be at least p plus 1. But look at this. This run of zeros right here is too short because the run of the zeros between the ones must be at least p plus 1, but this length right here is p, this run of zeros. So since there are only p zeros between these ones, these ones, then therefore x, y squared z is not in the language because um, this pair of consecutive ones is not far enough apart from each other. Okay, so what is the other case that could occur? Well, case two is where x includes the 1 and maybe some more zeros. So x is 1, 0 to the alpha. So some number of zeros. We don't know how many for sure. Um, y is only in the zeros. It never hits the second, the this one right here. So therefore, it's just 0 to the beta, where beta must be at least 1. So some number of one, zeros, at least one of them. 
and z is the rest. Well, that is 2 to the p minus p minus 3. Oops, I should put that in the exponent for the actual string part. 2 to the p minus p minus 3 minus alpha, which is the number of zeros that x took, and minus beta, which is the number of zeros that y took, and then the rest of the string here. So again, we gotta pick a value of i such that x, y to the i, z is not in the language. And again, we're going to pick i to be two. So x, y squared z, let's just copy down all the pieces. Well, here we have x, well, the alpha is gonna cancel with the alpha here. We're gonna have another occurrence of beta, so that means that we have a one, a zero to the power, two to the p, minus p minus 3, and the alphas went away. This beta cancels with one of the betas, but again, we have two occurrences of y. So we have a plus beta here, 1, 0 to the p, 1. And we know from the argument that we just did here, well, we are inserting another occurrence of beta. So then that means, uh, not occurrence of beta, we're including more zeros in the string. So here we know that the length of x, y squared z is at least two to the p plus one, and therefore the log base two of that thing is also strictly bigger than p. And again, we have the same conclusion that we had before, that this run of zeros, again, is too short. So here we get the same conclusion as before, because the length of the string requires that the log, the distance between the ones be strictly bigger than p, but the difference between these ones is exactly p. So why did I pick the string to start with? Well, I wanted a string of length exactly equal to 2 to the p, so that I can have a run of zeros here exactly to the, equal to p. The reason I did that is that is right on the boundary of not being in the language anymore. So if I made the string one character longer and not, and not add an additional zero here, then that means that the string got longer, which means that the requirement for the distance between the zeros to be strictly bigger, but this run of zeros was never touched. And so therefore, because we looked at all the possible cases, well, because the y part can't hit the next one after the run of zeros here, so therefore, what we can conclude is all decompositions allow us to pump out of the language. And then therefore, finally, we can conclude that since x, y squared, z is not in the language for all decompositions, remember we have to look at every single decomposition because if one of them works, then that would be the witness potentially that the language is regular. But because we looked at all decompositions and showed that in every case we always left the language, therefore L is not regular. Okay, So this was a quite tricky proof, but we were able to do it just by crafting the string just right in order for it to actually give us the contradiction that we want. So my advice for tricky pumping lemma proofs is to pick a string where one of the pieces is right on the boundary of having the string not be in the language anymore and then try to pump it so that you will always leave the you would violate the 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 thing that you are trying to prove that it's not in the language that this pair of ones right here is far uh, uh, really far apart and by putting it right on the boundary, making the string slightly longer, makes this requirement uh, cause the string to not be in the language anymore. Okay, so I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you have a different way of proving this. This was a very tricky proof, and I would be really interested to see if there are other ways that you can actually prove that this is not regular. If you like this content, please contribute either by subscribing to the channel or liking the video. It doesn't take any time at all and is completely free. These videos will be made for free for everyone and online forever. 
If you want to contribute additionally, we have a Discord server as well as a Patreon and many other links in the video description. So I hope that was interesting. I will see you next time.